Hello everyone, welcome to Anime No Me, and thank you for joining us for another One Piece video. Zoro and Sanji are Luffy's right and left hands, being considered the wings of the future King of the Pirates. But even though they are necessary pieces to make Luffy succeed in becoming the King of the Pirates, they constantly fight each other. Fights where these two characters appear to be enemies, but it's quite the contrary. Although they fight a lot, there is a great loyalty and friendship between them, a companionship that could make Zoro end up taking Sanji's life at some point in the story from One Piece. So in today's video, we're we're going to talk about the possibility of Zoro needing to take Sanji's life if he loses his emotions due to the genetic alteration that he experienced prior to his birth. But before we dive into the video, if you're new to the channel or even if you've watched a bunch of our videos, we'd be absolutely honored if you'd leave us a like and even subscribe and maybe leave us a comment letting us know what you thought of the video. It really helps us out, especially with that old YouTube algorithm, and it keeps motivating us to make more content. And if you'd like to help out the channel in a bigger way, consider sharing this video or another one of your favorites with a friend. Without further ado, let's get into the video. So my friends, for those who followed the Wano arc, you may know or remember what happened to Zoro and Sanji. There was an event in which Sanji was facing Queen, but an unforeseen event happened during this battle. Due to his use of the raid suit, Sanji realized that the genetic alteration that his father Judge made in the past in Sanji and his brothers and sister had modified and awakened in his body, causing him to develop the same physical characteristics as his siblings. But with the activation of these latent abilities, it also might mean that just like his brothers, Sanji would lose his emotions at some point in his journey, causing him to become colder and maybe even a cruel person. Realizing this possibility, Sanji asked Zoro to take his life if he lost his emotions, which left Zoro confused, but the swordsman agreed to take the cook's life if it was absolutely necessary. Now this is something Zoro might have just said in the heat of battle, as he was fighting King, a very powerful opponent, so he may not have had the time to think about what to answer Sanji, and to think about what moves he might make against the enemy that was right in front of him. Because as much as Zoro might act like it, we know very well that he would never have the courage or the fortitude to take the life of one of his companions, even if they themselves wanted it. And we have several examples of Zoro never considering the possibility of taking the lives of his crewmates, even if they had done something that could be considered a betrayal. For example, with the case of Nami, who betrayed the Straw Hats and went to Arlong to work with him, Zoro never once thought of taking Nami's life, even when Nico Robin is captured by CP9 to have her life taken. And even though Robin wanted to lose her life, Zoro did not want to allow this to happen, demonstrating that Zoro truly cares for his friends and crewmates, refusing to take their lives even if it might be necessary. So the very same thing could happen with Sanji. Although Sanji asked Zoro to take his life, there are two things that might prevent this from happening in the future. The first, and possibly the most likely, is that the genetic alteration in his body does not ultimately change his personality. As we saw during the Whole Cake Island arc, Sanji's brothers and sister were born with a modified body and without emotions. Unlike Sanji, who was born as a normal human, but in the future managed to unlock this body modification. While taking attacks from the invisible pirate queen, Sanji thought he was responsible for attacking a woman, making him wonder if he was losing control over his emotions. But much to the contrary, Sanji still remains completely normal. It only seems his body managed to acquire these new, more resistant characteristics, with no further emotional changes being modified. So this could mean that Sanji may never lose his emotions, remaining the same as he always was, making the possibility of him losing his emotions the only concern that he really has. The other thing that would prevent Zoro from taking Sanji's life, in the case that he really comes to lose his feelings, would be because of the great friendship that they have created throughout their adventure together. Although the two men talk like they don't care about each other, they have a deep companionship and connection, choosing to always take offense or fight physically, but there's something very strong and deep between them. A friendship or even a brotherhood in which they would never take each other's lives. In fact, they would give their lives to protect the other. So this frankly would would just make it nearly impossible for Zoro to take Sanji's life if necessary, because Zoro would have to take the life of a friend whom has always been by his side now for years, making this farewell something extremely painful. So again, although Zoro and Sanji may act like they hate each other, this is more like a really intense rivalry. So this quote-unquote hateful relationship between them officially started in Little Garden when the two competed in a hunting expedition, thus creating a competitive spirit between the two, in which they always see an opportunity to challenge and one up the other. The rivalry also extends to Sanji's cooking, as Zoro rarely ever recognizes Sanji as a great cook, let alone the quality of his dishes. Usually Zoro just says that the food Sanji made is acceptable, while the other crew say it's delicious and just fawn over the flavors. Zoro also has the habit of insulting Sanji whenever he's flirting with a woman, no matter if it's an enemy or one of his companions. Although all the Straw Hat crew already complain about Sanji because of this constant attitude, nosebleeds, and his fawning over women. The two also have common insulting nicknames 
names that they call each other. In fact, Zoro never calls Sanji by his real name, opting instead to usually call him curly-eyed cook or idiot cook or something offensive that Zoro makes up for Sanji. Sanji then calls Zoro Marimo or Mosshead or crappy swordsman or shit swordsman. And this escalated to the point where Sanji, like Zoro, doesn't call him by his real name. But despite their comical bickering and rivalries, they truly have a brotherly trust and love and care for each other, although they'd never really admit it. They also trust each other faithfully in each other's potential, recognizing the great strength and intelligence each possesses. In fact, the two warriors understand each other better than the other crew members, knowing the limits of each other so that they know when one of the two will win a fight or not. So many times they never intervene in the other's fight. Zoro's confidence in Sanji's strength and character can be seen several times throughout her story, although Sanji may have never realized it. Zoro smiled when Sanji returned to fight Jabra, one of the members of CP9 during the Ennis lobby arc. When Usopp and Frankie were worried about the Sunny's crew after arriving on Zo, Zoro stated that they would be fine because Sanji was with them, despite saying that he didn't care what happened to Sanji. Luffy even caught Zoro listening intently to Peckham's outside the door, showing that he still cared for Sanji's safety. And when Luffy said that Zoro was doing it because he cared about Sanji's safety, Zoro became irritated and tried to avoid worrying about Sanji. When the two were forced to fight together against a common enemy, they are nearly an unstoppable team. For instance, like the fight against Hamburg, Pickles, and Big Pan. Although often one hinders the other by executing some kind of uncoordinated move, this makes them start arguing in the middle of a confrontation and gives an advantage to their enemies to make an attack. But at the end, they always regain control and always beat their opponents. Now, whenever new bounties are distributed, Zoro is always proud that his bounty remains just a little bit bigger than Sanji's. However, after Sanji's bounty became greater than his after the events in Totaland, Zoro became quite angry and threatened to fight Sanji for it. But when Zoro's bounty became greater than Sanji's once more after the attack on Onigashima, Zoro didn't hesitate to mock Sanji about his inferior bounty, calling him number four. So once again, this caused a dispute and a battle between the two characters, because they can't have a simple conversation without some kind of drama between them happening, forcing some member of the crew to separate them. In fact, from the very beginning, where we saw these two seem to hate each other, at least in a friendly way, it still was aggressive, so the relationship between these two will probably never change. They will forever have this rivalry, which motivates them to get even stronger for each other. So despite the bluster and drama, it's absolutely clear that one would sacrifice his life to say the other, although they don't show the kind of respect that they feel for each other out of their pride, although we still know that they respect each other and it does exist. But it's this very rivalry and frenemy, friendship, whatever you want to call it, that makes Zoro and Sanji the strongest crew members, ultimately being responsible for guiding Luffy to his ultimate goal of becoming King of the Pirates, because they are the ones who protect their captain. So it's going to be very difficult for Zoro to ever actually take the life of Sanji's, even if it's necessary. Zoro would all always look for another way to get Sanji back to normal, possibly through the great scientist Dr. Vegapunk, who does have knowledge about the genetic alteration. Because after all, Vegapunk has already worked with Judge and probably even observed the very alteration that is responsible for changing Sanji. So if there ever really is a chance that Sanji loses his emotion, there are several ways to make him return to normal, as we can be sure Zoro will be the first one to think of possibilities to get his partner back, doing whatever it takes to not have to take Sanji's life. But with all that said, my friends, We'd now love to know what you think about it. Do you think Zoro ever really would take Sanji's life? And if he were to, what circumstance would have to happen in order for Zoro to execute this plan? Secondly, do you think Sanji ever really will lose his emotions? Or do you think that through all of his memories and the trust he has in his companions and crewmates, that will keep him grounded and always bring him back to his emotions? Let us know what you think in the comments below. So as we wrap up our video for the day, we'd like to thank you all so much for listening and watching especially those of you who've made it to the very end. Be sure to comment on any themes or ideas that you'd like to see in future videos. And also, since you made it this far, give us a like and hit that red subscribe button before you head out to take on the rest of your day. I hope to see you all in our next video. Let's keep sailing this giant sea together. Take care.